Seekers, I'm Nick. I've got a bit of a first world problem. <laughs> uh, okay, well, it's, it's kind of a, I'm in a bit of a pickle, right? I've been planning on doing a new custom water cooled workstation build, but not like any custom water cooled build using EK Pro. And this is all of the stuff that uses, I'll, I'll quickly show you because I want you guys to, to just take a quick look. It's using EK's new EK Pro stuff. So it's got manifolds, it's got quick disconnects. It's got all of the stuff for a workstation grade build. The problem is I can't pick the right case to do it in. And what I mean is I'm actually pretty spoiled for choice. The original plan was to use the Land Cool 2 mesh since my workstation's already in the Land Cool 2 and I figured that I would transplant it, uh, custom water cool it and do all that jazz in that case. The problem I'm finding with and with test fitting stuff is with the EK stuff that I want to use with the EK Pro stuff, the manifold, I'm going to be using this as the water block for my Threadripper system and the EK Quantum Kinetic, I can't get it to fit. And I can get other water cooling bits, but this is the way I want to do it. So the next option is, do I use the new Fantex P500A or do I find something completely different? Now, before we kick this video off, I want you guys to help me out here with some choices, right? I can use the Lancool 2 mesh or the P500A or any other case, but I want you guys to suggest either a case you think I should look at that's not too big. That's the thing, it's gotta be considerably small and something that I can fit all of the water cooling gear I need in there. And it's not hard tube, it's all soft tube and with EK Pro quick disconnects and the manifold and all the stuff to make this case a case that I'm gonna be using for the next five years. And the reason why I'm saying this is, if I need to upgrade hardware with the EK Quick Disconnect stuff, I can quite literally disconnect the water cooling, swap out the motherboard, put in the new gear, and literally plug all the new water cooling gear back in without having to change a single thing. And that's what I want. If something fails, let's say a GPU dies for some reason, I can literally unplug the water cooling from the GPU, and away we go again. So yeah, I want you guys to help me the side and, and it can't be too big. I want it to be either the size of the P500A or smaller like the Lancool 2 mesh or just anything, just drop some suggestions so I can start researching because I look at a lot of stuff every day but at the same time, I don't have heaps of time to go and seek out certain things. So if there's something that you know of that I should be looking at, please let me know. And with all that said, let's uh, carry on with this tear down and I'm going to try and test fit some of the EK Pro stuff as we get everything out so we can have a little bit of a look how we can make some of these things fit. All right, let's start pulling some of this stuff out so we can start to get an idea of what we can make fit in this case and see if this is going to be the case or if something that you guys suggest ends up being the case that I use for my new editing PC and my new workstation. Now, already the power supply is gone because I pulled it out and loaned it to our buddy Alex from Simple Mods. He's doing a Fantex build and I was like, yeah, you can, you can loan my Fantex power supply, no worries. And yeah, I loaned it to him. So let's pull out this GPU. I'll put a, a link to the PC part picker list that we use for this PC in the description if you're wanting to know about the specs. And yeah, let's uh, get that GPU out. All right, here we go, here we go. Okay, that's a big one. Uh, in my preemptive infinite wisdom, I actually realized that this motherboard's EATX, and that's the size of the motherboard that I am using in my workstation. That's another thing to consider. It's got to fit EATX motherboards because I don't want to have to go down that whole path of trying to make it fit in a case that doesn't technically already support EATX because my motherboard is EATX and I'm not really in the mood to go and change that motherboard right now. I just want to keep it as it is, keep it nice and simple so we can literally drop it in and be ready to go. But what I might do actually is leave this board in and get the cooler out and see if we can f like fit it. All right, that sounds like a good idea. Let's do that.
Well, we're just gonna do like a quick little eyeball and test fit just with uh, the pump res and with the mono block, basically because the radiators are gonna fit, it doesn't really matter. It's more about GPU length and where I actually want to place the manifold if this was the case that I actually wanted to use. So what we're gonna do is pull out these slide things on the back because I know how much everybody loves them. And that's what it looks like behind the slides on these Fantex cases. And it actually gives us quite a few mounting options with the holes that are on the case as well. I could quite literally just line them up with a bunch of holes and screw them in. And I think that would probably be the way to go with that, right? Or I would just drill new holes, like it's no big deal. It'd be, like I mentioned, the system would be something that would be used for a very, very long time. Now, the only other issue now is, uh, I know for a fact that my motherboard that I've got also has one of these stupid right angle power connectors, which introduces an issue if I were to mount it there. So I might have to move it slightly back. I'm not worried about the radiator at the front because the fans will be on the other side and I won't be doing push pull. It'll just be doing push from the front all the way through. Let's unwrap this, this has never been opened, it's brand new. I've been literally saving this for this project. I have another one of these for another build, but this is like for my personal stuff. So the idea would be to put it somewhere like that. Eyeballing it, I think it, uh, I, the mounting points would be about here if I was to use the bracket for this. The other idea I had initially, which what I wanted to do, which I could probably do with the DDC pump and a individual reservoir, but I don't want to do that. I want to have a, a a pump res like this, or the other option is I could get a square pump res, but what I was thinking of doing was mounting the pump res into the basement and then passing all the tubes up. So you wouldn't even see this. This would be in here, and then literally you'd see no water cooling gear except for a manifold. And I think that's probably still what I wanna do, but I, I, I need to plan and kind of eyeball it because I don't get much time to do this stuff off camera So I might as well do it with you guys as we're here doing stuff So maybe that's the maybe that's the way to do it Maybe what I actually do is get another pump res that can fit in the basement and then we can just go straight up like this straight up into the bottom because you see the inlet and outlet are on the bottom and it would not be a problem at all. So basically the way this works is, there needs to be flow all the way through, if you can see that, all the way through, it needs to flow all the way because one will be inlet and one will be outlet. And there's no like a loop order, like with a normal loop, it's basically manifold, in, out, GPU, in, out, and the loop order is completely irrelevant based on that. So yeah, uh, this is something I've been planning for how long now, Claire? Okay. Like eight, nine months? Yeah. yeah, I've been planning, actually I've been planning this since Computex last year, ages. ages, to do a build like this. And now like it's the time where I'm actually starting to plan this stuff. So I wanted to share a bit of like the planning stage. This is actually good because I haven't had a chance to do any of this yet. So maybe that's the go. Maybe I'll get a different pump res that'll live in the basement and then do all of the tubes going up. That's probably the way to go. That actually makes me a bit excited. So we hide all of the water cooling gear, except for the, the black tubes from the manifold. I've been accumulating parts for this project over the last little while, and I'll show you one of the things we'll be using, and it's a, it's the um, Quick Disconnect GPU kit. Basically what it does is it has the connections for the GPU like you'd see on a normal water cooled GPU. However, they come out on an angle. I'll just quickly finger tighten them in. So basically what you're seeing here, instead of the connections being on the top and the bottom of the GPU block, they actually come out to the side. So when you're using the quick connect disconnect fittings, they'll go basically in line. It uses nice thin tubing as well plugs in like that. Obviously you use a clamp to clamp it on. And then that makes the GPU be able to be disconnected easily, but this is not actually how it works. I'll show you how this works. The way this interfaces with the manifold, I'm just gonna show you this really quickly. 
you have one side of the fitting, which is, this is the manifold side. So it clips in like it, sorry, it fastens into the manifold like so. So what I can actually do is I can populate all of these with the quick disconnect fittings, even for stuff that I'm not using. So I can fill them all up. And then you have the other end, which is this end here. And it quite literally, with a little bit of force, plugs in and then this end has the has the hose coming off it to the GPU and to disconnect it you literally just pull it like that and it's a really ingenious solution and it's uh yeah it's very nice it's very easy to connect it doesn't seem like it but it's literally because I'm filming on a weird angle but quite literally I'll, I'll show you again that would be the whole connection on and then the tube goes out to the GPU. Obviously there'll be another quick disconnect here on the other side for it to return and that's it. And then if you want to like disc, obviously there's clamps that go in here and stuff, but when you want to disconnect, you just pull it and then your GPU is disconnected and then you can replace your GPU if you need to. So you don't have any leaks and you don't need to drain your whole loop to use something like this. So this is why I'm doing it because for future upgrades down the line, this is gonna make it way easier if I wanna swap out a new GPU or swap out the CPU or the motherboard because I can just quite literally quick disconnect everything. The next part of EK Pro stuff we're looking at is the CPU connection stuff. Now, for the water block that I'm gonna be using for this workstation, and this video has slowly turned into a talk about my workstation rather than the teardown of the P500A, is I wanted to use one of the new EK Quantum Velocity Threadripper blocks, and like for a tiny bit of bling. So this is the water block we're gonna be using for it. I decided not to use the EK Pro stuff for the water block. Uh, there's two reasons, one being that I, I just want a little bit of bling, right? Just a tiny bit. So this is the new water block. This is the revised version of it for Threadripper. It's got a full contact cold plate. I'm not pulling that off at all. <laughs> but the other part that's gonna play a role in this setup is the CPU quick disconnect kit, which is much the same as the GPU one, but the main difference being the tube is way, way thicker for the CPU, which is fine. That's no problem. It'll be easy to manage and that's just the way it is. It, the CPU usually requires a bit higher flow than what you'd need from a GPU typically. And yeah, the quick disconnects are the same. They just they they just have uh, bigger ends on them. I'll pull it out so you can have a look. They just have bigger nipple ends. Yes, the nipples uh, for the thicker tube. Other than that, they're exactly the same deal. They work exactly the same way. The actual quick disconnect fitting itself is a little bit fatter to accommodate the extra flow rate. But other than that, it's much the same. The actual quick disconnect fitting, a little bit fatter as well to accommodate that extra flow rate. But other than that, it's much the same. And I'm excited about doing this build eventually. But as you guys have seen and the things that we've learned in this video so far, we're probably gonna be changing the way that we're going to be doing the pump res. We're gonna get one of the EK square ones that we can shove. This is turning into a mess. But the idea is to fit as much water cooling gear as possible out of the way and put that stuff in the basement because I don't need any space for mechanical drives and whatnot. I don't need anything else here at all. I only use NVMe M.2 drives for my editing PC and my workstation. So that's the reason why. I want to fit, I want everything to look as neat as possible and it to be water cooled and have really, really good thermal performance. And yeah, that's the reason why I'm going down this path and I have been for the last year of planning. All right, that's enough talking about my future plans for my editing PC. So let's get this motherboard out and then we can wrap this thing up, right, Claire? Yeah, let's get this motherboard up. Ladies 
and gents, I hope you enjoyed that bit of a different teardown with the Fantex P500A. I've been planning this custom water cooled build with the EK Pro stuff for quite a while, and I've been trying to figure out like the way that I want to do it. And because I don't have heaps of time to actually sit down and plan stuff, the best way for me to do that is to sit down with you guys as I'm pulling something apart that I'm considering and seeing if it's actually going to fit. Now, I think the conclusion we came to is getting a square pump res combo, one that we can lay flat in the bottom of the case for this to work. And this might actually work in the land cool to mesh this way too but that is another video for another day, which you're probably gonna go back and test fit that stuff with the Lankle 2 mesh as well, because I'm curious to know if I can make it all fit. And I'm gonna guess with the way that we did the config for this one, or the way that we planned it, it's probably gonna fit. So yeah, uh, I wanna do more stuff with this EK Pro Enterprise type of water cooling, but the, I've only got like one set of stuff to do it with and it's gonna be for my editing PC. And like I said, the main reason why I'm going down this path for having quick disconnects is because it's not like perfectly clean, like it's not going to leak, that's, that's not the point. The point is it might leak a little bit when I quick disconnect, but I would rather have that with a little drop of water disconnecting stuff than having to tear down an entire loop or a hard tube loop just to take out the GPU if I want to upgrade or just to swap out the CPU if I want to upgrade or the motherboard or whatnot. I just want to make it as easy as possible. And this isn't like a solution that I want to keep for like a year or two years. I want this to last as long as possible. I want to find the perfect balance that will just last for, for the foreseeable future. And that's, that's kind of, that's kind of where I'm at right now. I want things to be as small as possible and as efficient as possible so we can get stuff done as fast as possible. And that's just, yeah, that's basically where my head's at. And yeah, I'll put a link to the PC part picker list and the original video to the P500A build that we did. I'll also put it up there somewhere if you want to check it out for the video. And if you like the music you heard here, I make all the music that's available either on our Patreon and now some songs are also available on Spotify as well. And if I decide that I'm using a song from our Spotify stuff, I'll put a link to that playlist or the artist page in the description below or the album link or whatever. I'll put it in the description down below because yeah, we did get all of my backlogged stuff that I re released commercially completely whitelisted on the channel. So we've got a massive selection of music now. So cool. All right, what do you reckon, Claire? Yeah. Good? You yeah. sound like you, you look like you want to say something. You look like you want to say something. Uh, yeah. You look like, you actually look like you wanted to say something okay. you just said. What do you want to say? I was going to say our Patreon still exists though. That's what I'm, yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Like, so all of the music that we've already got commercially released, uh, we're not going to be putting that on Spotify. All the new, new stuff is Patreon and now Floatplane only as well because Floatplane has been updated to allow us to upload music to Floatplane as well. So you can pick either Floatplane or Patreon to grab our music. Uh, the music is available on our lowest Floatplane tier and not on the lowest Patreon tier because they're like different prices and stuff. I don't know. I don't know. You guys can just check it out, right? Just check it out. Yep. Yep. All good. Also, early access is on Flight Plane 2, and you can hit the join button if you want to support the channel. You guys know how this works. If you like the video, smash the like. If you hated it, hit this like twice. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak. We seek. And I'm oh, I'm so excited to do this EK Pro project. Like I've been I've been trying to organize this for like a year now, and it's just kind of one of those things that Keeps getting away, keeps getting away, keeps going on and on, kind of like me in this video. <laughs> Thanks for watching.